Let's explore with daily interaction number four. Hey, what's up everyone? John with WebDev for you, and welcome to the daily interaction series, where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. Today we're gonna build an infinite rotation on load. Uh, so here I have the example, it's kind of like a little solar system. Uh, so we have the planet, uh, the sun here in the center and the circles. Uh, we know it's not really to scale uh, because if this was the earth and this was the sun, the sun would be uh, a lot bigger. Um, and we also have these crosses here infinitely rotating um, as well. So yeah, this first circle with the planet is rotating clockwise and the inner circle is rotating counterclockwise. Um, they probably wouldn't be rotating that way uh, in a solar system, but yeah, this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, so this is something I think a lot of people would like to know about because there's no button in Webflow that says infinite rotation. Um, so there are a few steps in the interaction. Um, it's, not, it's nothing uh, super complicated. Uh, it's just a few uh, timed actions, uh, but we will cover that in this tutorial. So first we're gonna build the solar system. So we're gonna get a bit of practice adding elements, and then we'll add the interaction. Uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there's a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project, and we'll start with the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's D dash the daily interaction number. So today is four and then the element. So every element on the site will have a D dash four in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes. And so that we know we're working with daily interaction number four. Then here, uh, yes, yeah, so first we'll build the elements or the, the solar system and we'll add the interaction. So the first thing I'll do here is add an element, add a section, I'll give this the class name d-4 section. Then for the height, I'll set it to 100 VH. So it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well. Then I'll scroll down to the background. I'll give it a background color of black and I'll scroll up to display setting and set it to flex and horizontal and justify center and align center. So anything I place <clears throat> within the section will be in the center. So now I'll add another element. So I'll add a div block. And as we can see, it's in the center. And here I'll give it the class name D-4 Solar System Wrapper. So this is where the planet and the circles and the sun, they're all gonna go inside of this wrapper. Uh, so for this, I'll give it a width and height of 300 by 300. So 300 pixels in width and 300 pixels uh, in height. Um, I'll set the position to relative because I'm gonna have an absolute position div inside of this wrapper and I want it to be relative to it and not relative to some other parent element. So by setting it to relative, anything inside of it will be relative to it. Um, and then for the display setting, I'll set it to flex and set it to horizontal, uh, justify center and align center. So anything I place within here will be in the center. So now I'll add another element and I'll add a div block and this will be the first circle. So here I'll give it the class name D-4 circle. And for the width and height, I'll set it to 250 by 250 and I'll place the, uh, the circle within this div block. So I'll scroll down to background. Um, I'll add a background image I'll choose an image and I'll select the circle here. I've already uploaded it to Webflow and I'll set it to a size of cover and center and I don't need it to be tiled. So for tiled, I'll say none. Okay, so there we have the first circle. Now I want to add the, the planet, so that little circle. Um, so I'll add an element, I'll add a div block. So it's gonna go inside of D-4 circle and here I'll give it the class name D-4 planet. Okay, and I'll scroll up. I'll give it a width and height of 50 by 50. And I'll scroll down. I'll give it a background color of blue. So I'll set the background color there. And for the border radius, I'll set it to 50%. 50%. 50%. 
So with uh, the border radius to make it a perfect circle, it just needs to be half the size of the square. So here I entered in 50%, or if you're working with pixels, um, or if I, were, yeah, if I were to add pixels, it would be 25 pixels because it's half of 50. Uh, but here I just entered in 50% and we have a perfect circle. So here I'll scroll up and I'll give it a top margin of let's say 30. So it lands a bit better on the circle. Um, and there we go. So we have the circle with the planet. And now I want an inner circle. So for this, I'll go into the navigator. Um, here we have D-4 circle. So here I'll hit Command C to copy and then Command V to paste. So now we have two of them side by side. And for the second one here in the navigator, I don't need the planet inside of it. So I'll delete it and then I'll select it. D-4 circle. I'll go into styles and I'll give it a combo class of second um, so we can apply uh, its own properties to this circle. Uh, so for this, I'm going to scroll down to position right here and I'm going to set it to absolute so it uh, so it goes on top of the first circle. And then here I'll just change the width and height. So I'll set it to 150 by 150 and there we have the inner circle. Uh, so the last element we need to add is the sun and I'm going to add it to the solar system wrapper. Um, so it goes, it goes in the center of the wrapper. Uh, so here with it selected, um, I'll add a div block and we'll give it the class name D-4 sun. And for this, I'll give it a width and height of 50 by 50 and I'll set the position to absolute. So it goes in the center. Uh, because the solar system wrapper has a flex property of center center uh, once we set this to a position of absolute it goes in the center and then for the background I'll give it a background of light pink or plum here as it says um, and then for the border radius I'll set it to 50% so we have a perfect circle and I'm gonna add a bit more styling to the Sun so I'm gonna go to effects here where it says filters I'm gonna click the plus to add a filter and I want to add a blur filter and five pixels. So those are the default settings it starts with. So I'll just leave it like that. So we have a blur, a type blur and a radius of five pixels. And then I'll add a one pixel blur to the planet just for a bit more styling. So I'll select it here in the designer, add a filter and change the blur radius to one pixel. All right, so there we go. There we have all the elements we need to create the infinite rotation uh, interaction or uh, animation. All right, so now what I'll do is go into the interactions here in the upper right, uh, so this lightning bolt symbol, and it's gonna be a page trigger uh, interaction. So here I'll click the plus symbol next to the page trigger. I'll say page load, and here we have a couple of, a couple of options. We can start it when the page starts loading or when the page finishes loading. Um, this is a personal preference for me. I like to start it when the page finishes loading. Um, I like the idea of having the site load first and then the animation kick in. Um, so I'm going to here where it says one page finishes loading. I'm going to start an animation and I'm going to uh, add a new timed animation. All right. So here I'll for the timed animation, I'll call it D-4 page load. All right, and for this, I want to affect the circle with the planet, so I'll select it here. Then I'll go into the interaction. So the way this interaction is going to work is that we're going to rotate it 359 degrees on the Z axis, and then we're going to set another timed action at zero and not give it any duration, so it goes 359, zero, and then we're going to set it to loop, so it goes 359, zero, 359, zero, and that's how we create the infinite rotation. Uh, so here for the first time to action, I'll click the plus symbol and I'll say rotate and I'll rotate it on the Z axis. So we can do X, Y, or Z. If we did X, it would rotate like this. If we did Y, it would rotate like this. Um, I just want it to rotate clockwise. So I want to rotate it on the Z axis. So here I'll enter in 359 and uh, we'll leave the duration like that for now. We do want the easing to be linear. Uh, we don't want to we don't want to add any easing because uh, then it wouldn't look like an infinite rotation. Um, so the next time to action, so I'll click, uh, yeah, I'll click here to add a new time to action. I'll say rotate. And for this, I'll rotate it uh, to zero on the Z axis. 
and I'll set the duration to zero because we don't want any rotation, so it continuously loops. So now if I preview, we have one rotation. So what we need to do here is, yeah, I'll close it here, and here I'll set it to loop. So I'll just select loop, and now when I preview, we have an infinite rotation. Uh, it's a bit quick, so I'll go back into the uh, timed action, and I'll set the duration for the first timed action to four. And now when I preview, looks good. We have the infinite rotation, and uh, it's a bit slower, so we can see it a bit better. Um, if I were to set an easing to this, like let's say I set it to ease out expo, and I preview, we see it doesn't look like it's infinitely rotating because it, it speeds up and then slows down, so it's not a continuous uh, circle rotating. All right, or a continuous rotation. Um, so yeah, I, I wanna make sure that for the easing it's set to linear and none. All right, looks good. Okay, so now I'll have the inner circle rotate counterclockwise. Um, probably in a solar system you wouldn't have planets rotating the other way, but this is just for demonstration purposes, so I'll just quickly show how to make something rotate counterclockwise. Uh, so here, uh, yeah, let me go into the navigator. I'll select the second circle. So it's right here in the navigator. Go back into interactions, add a new uh, page load animation. And again, I'm gonna start when page finishes loading. So here I'll start an animation and I'll add a new timed animation and I'll call this D-4 page load second. Okay, and then for the timed action, um, I'll add a rotate. And for the, on the Z index, I'll say negative <clears throat> 359 to rotate it counterclockwise. And uh, for, yeah, that's all I have to do there. I'll set the duration to four as well. Then I'll add a new timed action. I'll say rotate and rotate it to zero on the Z axis and set the duration to zero. And there we go, so I'll close this here and I'll set it to loop. So now I'll preview. So the first circle is rotating clockwise and the second circle is rotating counterclockwise. Um, so that's it, that's how we create an infinite rotation in Webflow. You know, just set the first timed action to 359 degrees, then the second one to zero degrees and no duration, and then set it to loop and you'll have an infinite rotation. All right, <laughs> excuse me, all right, looks good. Um, so that is it for daily interaction number four. Um, I do have these crosses rotating for this. I just created a, a div block, um, set it to a, uh, a flex of center and center, and then set these uh, lines like one pixel in width and 20 pixels in height, and just centered them and then rotated one of them with the transforms and web flow, and then applied the infin infinite rotation to the div block to have it infinitely rotate. Um, yeah, so that's it for uh, this video tutorial. Uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also, be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.